Throughout modern history, violent media has often been blamed for inspiring real-world violence. Charles Manson and his followers were avid fans of the Beatles, going so far as to write Helter Skelter, the name of one of the band's songs, on the wall of the house where they murdered the inhabitants of the Labianca residence, though they got the spelling wrong. Mark David Chapman, the man who shot John Lennon, was an obsessive reader of The Catcher in the Rye and even had the book in his possession the day that he was arrested. The number of killers who claim to have been inspired by works of fiction is just too many to count, and concerns about violent media have prompted the United States Senate to hold hearings about whether violent media should be censored. In 1985, Dee Snyder of the band Twisted Sister testified before the Senate in his stage outfit defending his song lyrics and the images in the music video for the song We're Not Going to Take It, which portrayed a father being hit in a Looney Tunes-esque fashion. Similarly, between 1993 and 1994, the Senate held hearings over violent video games and their impact on young minds. In particular, were the games Mortal Kombat, in which characters in the game are encouraged to dismember and decapitate each other, and Night Trap, which portrays young women being attacked by vampire-like beings. While the goal of the player in Night Trap is to stop the attackers and to save the women, senators at the time still felt that the game was encouraging violence against women. Somehow. The Senate hearings directly led to the formation of the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, or ESRB, to help educate consumers about the content of the video games that they were purchasing. Now, despite these hearings, the prevailing wisdom is that while violent offenders may claim to have been inspired by a work of art, the artist cannot and should not be held responsible for the actions of those that have engaged with their work. After all, different people have vastly different interpretations of a piece of media. Unfortunately, there was an instance where this conventional wisdom falls flat. Back in 1977, author Stephen King published a book titled Rage. Twenty years later, he would ask his publisher to remove the book from print. His reason? Because there was enough evidence that his book was inspiring young men to kill. Born in 1947, King has written over 60 novels and approximately 200 short stories throughout his lifetime. Over 30 of his novels have been on the New York Times bestsellers list, his books have been adapted into numerous movies and television shows, and his works have received so many awards that they have their own Wikipedia page. After the successes of his first two novels, Carrie and Salem's Lot, Stephen King was eager to release books more often. At the time, it was generally believed that if an author were to release more than one book a year, the public would not be interested enough to buy both books, and as a result, he adopted a pseudonym. In 1977, he'd release The Shining under his own name, and would adopt the name Richard Bachman for his other novel, Rage. Originally titled Getting It On when he first wrote it back in high school, Rage tells the story of Charlie Decker, a troubled boy with a domineering father and a fixation on Ted Jones, the school's most popular boy. One day, Charlie takes a gun to school, killing his algebra teacher and holding his class hostage. Throughout the course of the book, Charlie's classmates begin to sympathize with him and wind up turning on Ted, going so far as to attack him when he tries to escape. In the end, Charlie provokes a police officer, hoping that the man will shoot him and end his life. Instead, Charlie's arrested and he's found not guilty by reason of insanity and he's placed in a mental institution. While King had established himself as a horror author, Rage differs from his other early works in that it has no supernatural elements. It is a disturbingly grounded story, one that sounds just uncomfortably familiar. King would go on to write other books under the Bachman pseudonym, including The Long Walk, a story about a hundred boys who go on a walk and are shot to death as they can't keep up, Road Work, about a man driven to madness when he learns his home will be demolished, and The Running Man, a dystopian thriller which would later be made into an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Though, quick note here for those familiar with the movie, aside from some of the character names and the general premise, it is absolutely nothing like the book. In 1985, Bachman's true identity would be discovered by a store clerk in Washington, D.C. Rage, along with the other three books uh, that we just mentioned, would go on to be published in a compilation titled The Bachman Books. King's alter ego would go on to be a hit with readers. The American Library Association listed The Long Walk as one of the 100 best books for teenage readers, while Roadwork and The Running Man currently have movies in development decades after their original releases. While King's other novels from this period are hardly what you'd call light-hearted, the Bachman books showed a view of the world that was cynical, depressing, 
and just uncomfortably realistic. The Long Walk was written around the time of the Vietnam War, with the protagonists being of a similar age to the young men who were enlisted in the war. In the novel, the boys enter a deadly walking competition with the promise that the winner will get whatever they want. The implication being that these young men are putting their lives on the line without fully understanding what they've signed up for. The Running Man, the book, not the film, portrays a desperate husband and father willing to enter a deadly game show, subjecting himself to torture and humiliation in order to provide for his family. Roadwork shows a man's descent into madness and violence as he realizes that he's losing everything that he has worked his entire life for. Despite the violent themes of the other Bachman novels, Stephen King has said that if Rage were written today and a high school English teacher had seen it, he would have found himself in therapy post-haste. The book contained a nasty, glowing center of truth that was more acceptable to him as an adolescent. To quote, As far as I'm concerned, high school sucked when I went, and probably sucks now. I tend to regard people who remember it as the best four years of their lives with caution and a degree of pity. Unfortunately, for some readers, the novel may have been a little too relatable. In April of 1988, tragedy struck. A student named Jeffrey Lynn Cox walked into his high school in California and held his class hostage with an assault rifle. He demanded authorities give him a million dollars, hoping he could flee to Brazil with the money. Fortunately, nobody was injured as oh, one student managed to disarm Cox. When asked where he had gotten the idea, Cox said that it had been inspired by the Kuwait Airways Flight 422 hijacking, as well as the novel Rage, which he had read obsessively prior to the incident. In September 1989, the following year, a 17-year-old named Dustin Pierce entered class at Jackson County High School in Kentucky with a 44 Magnum and a shotgun. He held his classmates hostage, and after a nine-hour standoff, he surrendered himself to the police, having not harmed anyone. Police would later find a copy of Rage in his bedroom at home. King would say in an interview at the time that he believed Pierce was acting the book out even before the novel was reported to be found at his home. He denied that the book was to blame for the incident, saying, if they didn't do it one way, they would do it another way. Crazy is crazy. In January 1993, Scott Pennington, a student at East Carter High School, also in Kentucky, took a revolver and shot his English teacher, Deanna McDavid, killing her. The school custodian, Marvin Hicks, heard the shot and came to the classroom. Pennington shot Hicks in the stomach, killing him as well. After 20 minutes, Pennington let the class go and surrendered himself to the police. His teacher, McDavid, had given him a C in the class and had noticed that a lot of his writing was about violence and death. He had previously written an essay about rage, showing sympathy to the book's protagonist, Charlie Decker. In February 1996, Barry Lukaitis, a student at Frontier Middle School in Washington, entered his school with a revolver and a hunting rifle, killing his algebra teacher, Leona Cares, and his fellow students, Manuel Vela and Arnold Fritz. Another student was shot, but survived their injuries. Lukaitis would proceed to take students hostage, but one student took his gun and wrestled him to the ground, subduing him until the police arrived. A thoroughly read copy of Rage was found on his nightstand at home. During his attack, Lukaitis had yelled, This sure beats algebra, doesn't it? This was echoing a similar quote from the book. King's publicist at the time, Shirley Sonderegger, told the press, This has happened before, and of course, it's always Steve's fault. We have no comment. Finally, in December 1997, 14-year-old Michael Carneal brought a shotgun and a rifle to Heath High School, where he was a student. He opened fire at a group of students engaged in morning prayer. Three of them died, Nicole Hadley, Casey Steger, and Jessica James. Five others were injured. A friend of Carneal's, Benjamin Strong, managed to subdue him. Carneal looked in his friend's eyes and said, kill me, please. I can't believe I did that. Authorities would later find a copy of the Barkman books, which included Rage and Carnell's Locker. After the Heath High School shooting, Stephen King had had enough. He asked his publisher to remove the book from print. Now, that wasn't easy to do, as the book was part of the Barkman books, but eventually the collection was reprinted with Rage removed. While the other books in the collection also included scenes of gun violence, they had not caused controversy the same way that Rage had. King had stated that he pulled the book with real regret, and that anyone who doesn't feel a qualm of regret at throwing a blanket over the truth is an asshole with no conscience. Regardless, though, to quote, Charlie had to go. A decade later, following the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in which 26 people were killed, 20 of them being students aged between 6 and 7, King published an essay simply titled Guns 
addressing America's epidemic of gun violence. In the essay, he talks about rage and why he felt the need to remove it from print. He believes that while his book did not turn the shooters into killers, quote, they found something in my book that spoke to them because they were already broken. King saw rage as a possible accelerant. He goes on to list possible solutions to America's gun violence epidemic, including banning the sale of assault weapons, to quote, I didn't pull rage from publication because the law demanded it. I pulled it because in my judgment, it might be hurting people, and that made it the responsible thing to do. He asked the gun owners to make a similar sacrifice. A decade after King's essay, America still faces a gun violence epidemic, with the unfortunate reality being that between this video being written and its publication, another mass shooting may have occurred. Just as rock music and video games have been used as scapegoats to explain a violent person's actions, King's rage has been blamed for these tragedies. Accusers seem to ignore the other circumstances such as bullying, abusive parents, suicidal thoughts, easy access to guns. What makes the book stand out, however, is that it seemingly provides a template for how these shooters should act. Charlie Decker's classmates in a form of Stockholm Syndrome, came to agree with his actions, preemptively validating the violence of the real-life shooters that followed. This is a far cry from the Columbine shooters having played Doom prior to their rampage, as the game's cartoonish violence against demons in no way resembles the massacre that followed. In 2007, Stephen King resurrected the Richard Bachman pseudonym for the book Blaze, the story of a man who kidnaps an infant with millionaire parents. In the foreword, King talks about the previous books under his pen name, saying of rage, now out of print, and a good thing. 